Hi, I'm Dave McCray. I'm a research fellow in the East Asia program at the Lowy Institute. And I'm Ernie Bauer, and I'm the chair for Southeast Asian Studies here at CSIS in Washington. Welcome, Ernie. Today we'll be uh, discussing Myanmar, previously a pariah state, but uh, in the last two years a standout example of political change in Southeast Asia. Under President Thein Sein, we've seen restrictions on political expression relaxed, political prisoners released, uh, the opposition parties welcome back into uh, parliament through limited by-elections that have seen Aung San Suu Kyi herself become an MP. Uh, but Myanmar is still not a democracy. Uh, competitive elections won't be held to 2015 and the constitution still grants the military 25% of seats in parliament and prevents Aung San Suu Kyi from running for president. We've also seen violence against the Rohingya minority as well as other internal conflicts uh, which have grabbed international attention which creates a dilemma for, for countries that have previously uh, applied sanctions as to whether to engage and how. Uh, Ernie, what has been the US approach uh, to this situation? Well, I think, you know, you got to watch where the president himself has gone. You know, he, he uh, Dave, you're probably aware, he actually took, um, he, he took the decision to visit Myanmar himself, uh, which is, was a pretty extraordinary decision uh, from the White House and from President Obama. I think the, the read in Washington is that this is a historic opportunity uh, to uh, promote economic and political change. And in, actually, in the reverse order, that we usually see it in Southeast Asia. Most countries have done uh, economic reform and then followed that with political reform. Myanmar is trying it a different way. They're trying to lead uh, with political reform and have economic reform provide uh, um, momentum uh, for that change. And I, th I think uh, Washington has bought into that approach. Even the harshest uh, uh, high priest of, uh, of sanctions uh, in our Senate, uh, Mitch McConnell, has visited Myanmar and has come back and said that he would not, uh, he would not favor extension of sanctions. Yep. No, Australia's been very much the same. In fact, uh, I think Australia was the first country to relax uh, economic sanctions and after that uh, our Foreign Minister, uh, Senator Bob Carr, has really actively lobbied the European Union in particular uh, earlier this year to remove rather than simply suspend sanctions. And I think uh, that reflects, again, uh, as you've mentioned with the United States, a desire to support reforms. It also reflects that uh, you mentioned political changes preceded economic change, the tremendous poverty in Myanmar and, and opening up a, a chance to, to address some of that. Uh, also, in Australia's case, uh, the Foreign Minister has very much depicted this as a way of aligning Australia's approach more closely with uh, what the ASEAN states have, have pursued over, over previous years of, of engaging rather than, than a punitive approach. Um, of course, this still does leave, the, uh, as I mentioned, the, the human rights issues. Uh, how, how has the US addressed this within the context of, of removing sanctions? Well, I think. Um you know, you rightly point out that Australia has been a leader here, and I, and I think this is a really important opportunity for the United States, Australia, Japan, and India to work to strengthen ASEAN while we support um, political and economic reform and the advancement of human rights in Myanmar. So we all have our own interests there, uh, commercial and otherwise, but I think we need to work together uh, behind an ASEAN lead, uh, particularly on issues like human rights. So I would, uh, from a policy perspective, Dave, I, I think a good idea um, for us as we approach the human rights issues in Myanmar is to um, try to support the ASEAN um, uh, Human Rights Commission and its, its engagement of Myanmar and provide them with uh, um, support, uh, training, um, on the ground, uh, joint uh, meetings with, uh, with key players in Myanmar. And I think that will strengthen not only our ties uh, and, and the alliance, but it will help us uh, work together to strengthen ASEAN and promote uh, good results in Myanmar. Okay. Um, on another front, on, on military ties, uh, Australia in its white paper earlier this year announced that it would restore a resident defence attaché and uh, also resume military ties in the non-controversial areas of, of disaster relief, humanitarian relief, so on and so forth. Uh, what has the U.S. Uh, been doing on, on defense engagement with Myanmar and, and what can it achieve through that? You know, we're, we're really leaning forward on this. The uh, Myanmar government has, uh, and the military, has asked for uh, engagement and support, not on, on lethal training, but on 
uh, really on on doctrine and um, and uh, civil rights and how to increase uh, civilian uh, uh, leadership uh, in the military. So these are these are good areas to work on, and we um, we have begun actual direct training uh, in some of those areas uh, in Myanmar. And we will use uh, institutions like the APCSS in Hawaii, and our, our I think eventually our IMET program to uh, to do this training. But again, it's it's training we could do um, together with Australia, and and also possibly under the ASEAN Defense uh, Ministers Plus, um, might be a good opportunity for the joint militaries uh, regionally or the select uh, militaries that are willing. Uh, to do joint training and, and help uh, help support the the mill to mill, or the advancement and the um, the modernization and professionalization of the Myanmar military, but uh, we're we're keenly interested in this uh, subject here in Washington. Sure, and uh, multilateral uh, engagement is also an option, and Australia has broached for its own defence engagement, uh, and you know with the with the level certainly. That Australia is talking about of defence engagement, I don't think anyone imagines that this is going to transform the Myanmar military, still an extremely powerful institution within the country and one that's been closed off for, for so long. Uh, but I guess again it's this calculation that at an overall moment of political change it's, uh, it's a chance to, to try to affect some change. Uh, finally, uh, Ernie, what do you see as the, the role of aid in, in supporting the uh, political and, and economic change happening in Myanmar? Uh, I think I think aid and development assistance is going to be a huge uh, uh, a huge enterprise. In fact, um, one of our biggest uh, uh, Myanmar and Yangon is becoming one of our biggest aid missions in the region now, and I know that that's true for AusAid too. Um, I hate to uh, to to sound like a, a you know broken record here, but you know this is exactly the kind of uh, the, the coordination of, of efforts on aid, uh, sort of looking at the spectrum of, of who's got uh, particular talents in areas ranging from government, uh, governance to rule of law to uh, IT to uh, soft and then hard infrastructure, is something that um, the, the donors uh, in Myanmar should, uh, should try to coordinate. There are, you know, attempts, as you well know, Dave, uh, on coordination of aid. But I think um, there has to be uh, room for uh, s smaller groups of like-minded countries to sort of team up and, and coordinate our assistance because, as, as you'll know from uh, your trips to the region uh, and to Napada and, and Yangon, I think the biggest issue is their absorptive capacity to receive um, uh, this assistance and then digest it and actually uh, act on it. Sure, and I mean, it's... Uh situation where uh, previously you've had a regime that has neglected even some of the most basic functions of government. I mean, there hasn't been a census for 30 years. Uh, Australia is very much focusing on, on basic education. Uh, and so certainly the, the opportunities uh, to, to support change through aid are large. But as you say, uh, when you have had uh, such a limited uh, bureaucratic capacity, the, the ability to absorb that is, is difficult. And I think that's true of if uh, we look back to uh, when Indonesia democratized with the civil society there as well, uh, you know, very important to support civil society as a, as a check on political change. Uh, but when you're providing uh, assistance to civil society groups, it's not always the case that uh, more is always better. Uh, because again, you, you have to find some common ground on the sorts of issues that these civil society groups can raise, uh, look at their capacity to absorb aid and also the capacity of donor countries to, to manage the programs they're supporting. Uh, Ernie, it's been great to talk to you today and uh, I, I hope we can uh, talk Southeast Asia again in the near future. Thanks for the time, Dave, and uh, great to connect uh, across the uh, Pacific here. Good luck uh, down under with your elections. Thank you. Cheers. Right